I'm Steve Mast and I'm with Precision Countertops and I've been in the industry for almost 25 years. I sit on the board of ISFA, um, the vice president of ISFA, which is a countertop organization. I just love countertops. I love helping people. Well, uh, welcome to the Precision Countertop Show in Portland, Oregon. Um, this is where we're headquartered. And this showroom is about 2,000 square feet. And it's where we welcome most of our uh, clients from various channels, contractors and direct and big box that come in here. And we try to use it to showcase all the different services that we offer. And um, we, we do all products, we, meaning we do laminate, salt surface and stone. Um, we also install, install uh, beautiful tile backsplash and then uh, offer sinks as well. So all of the things that we think somebody would need, we offer the plumbing services too. Um, here's Marilyn, one of our designers here. And, um, and then we have display walls of the quartz, the natural stone we actually have in the slabs outside, but you can see we, we kind of design things by uh, hue. So here would be white quartz, which is tremendously popular, I think, out of our top 10 selling uh, products, probably seven of them are white quartz right now. Generally, we try to find things that are from suppliers that we have good relationships with, that we know that can support us and, and provide product in a timely manner for us, um, which isn't always easy for all suppliers. And so it's gotta be a supplier that we trust that'll back us up if there's a warranty issue or a slab comes in defective and we need some support. Um, so that's a big part of it. And then just trying to find something that has um, a, a beautiful look to it. And then we have various price points so that we have a value offering as well as you know some of the more luxury items would be in, in terms of quartz would be like this, this Cambria here is a, is a higher end material, but then a, a simple white quartz over here would be something for a price point if someone's looking for to save a little money or they're fixing up something and they're going to sell it. So it's really a matter of just looking at price and then the offering and then your suppliers. This is Kevin, our sales manager. And one of the tools that we use a lot is we have CounterGo that we started using in 2014. I think we've done, I don't know, over 100,000 quotes in it. And it's a really uh, powerful tool for us to be able to create a quote, email it to a customer. Um, one designer can start the quote, another designer can pick it up. It's really where the whole thing starts in our, and you'll notice when you're in our showroom that CounterGo is, is a tool that from a technology standpoint, especially now where we do more virtual appointments right now with the coronavirus we've had, less people coming in we've done more virtual and the counter go we can have up and do that while we're working with the client we would start off with from the front would be counter go um and then we would have uh the obviously more aware we use for our scheduling and for our, all of our activities and then we would have Slabsmith for our digital layouts and our inventory. Here's a supplier bringing in material. And then uh, a couple of years ago, we went to using Moraware on the shop floor and eliminated our paperwork, which was a big deal for us to go paperless in the shop. Um, so what we did was we added terminals throughout the shop. Like, and we weren't really familiar with the shop user function of Moraware. Uh, another fabricator showed it to us. But so... This would be when you talk about the technology we use in the shop. On the left here is a simplified version of Moraware. It's called the shop user function. And these two jobs are in progress being cut. You can see that. And so if when they're done being cut, then the operator just hits stop. And when he starts this job, he hits start. And that changes the progress or the activity of Moraware. So the office or anyone knows, you know, that job has been cut or it hasn't. We can go ahead and make a change. They know the slabs that were assigned to them. Um, and then we just print, we just print labels uh, from the speed label software right here at the at the saws, and then we apply those labels uh, before we take the pieces off, like he's doing there. And so we don't have any paperwork other than our labels. It used to be that we would print our paperwork in the office, 
And then we would take that paperwork for the day for what was to be cut for the guys and they would work off that. And then you'd have to update it or write something on it. But now we essentially with the labels, we just print the paperwork and put it on the pieces themselves. So every piece has a sticker on it that has all of the information from Moraware and the drawing from the template on each and every piece with all the information. So it's been a big help for us just for communication and not chasing wet paperwork and lots of copies all over. Um, but especially as you get into a you know a rough fabrication environment, it's nice to have all the information for that job right on every single piece. We use a, another piece of technology called Slabsmith that helps us with doing the layouts and we inventory all of our material um, by taking a picture of it in Slabsmith. And so then our designers can bring up those granite slabs uh, online and they can see if that's, you know, for example, all the material here may not be available. Some of it may be sold, but we can tell that quickly and easily by uh, bringing it up. And so they might show that slab rather than having someone have to come back through here and thumb through three or four slabs, we can show them that here we are actually taking uh, pictures of material. There's not a, a slab on the board right now, but normally when we receive our inventory, we would take photos of those slabs and put those into the Slabsmith program for us to be able to uh, either, if we needed to show a client, do a layout for them or um, for the purposes of our, our digital saws to know we, we program those for, um, for being able to do the layouts. I think, you know, one of the other things is that I would encourage is getting, you know, as many terminals as you can throughout the shop. Like, you know, we have the Moraware that's on the shop floor. This is the Slabsmith layout. You know, by putting simple terminals throughout your shop, you're able to get the information that people need right to the people that need the information quicker. Um, we didn't always have these computer terminals throughout the shop where the information was easily accessible. And I think that's made a big, big, big improvement for us. that's true with everything we do it's so funny um and it's not just technology technology seems to be one of the most difficult but like for example these green pods you see here are a new type of pod maybe they've been out for three years in the industry and our guys didn't want to use them and we actually had sets of them sitting here but they weren't using them and then once they actually started using them every day they found that there were a bunch of added benefits they were lighter they didn't chip and damage like the other ones they love them and now they want to transition the rest of them but you have to get that kind of full adoption to really get the full effect and appreciate whatever the change is with the labels for example um we we introduced those and all we did was paper clip and send them out with the paperwork we didn't have them stop what they were doing and how they were doing it we just added it to it for a while and then they eventually transition to where they removed uh, the paperwork from the process themselves. And so it's a little bit easier if you can get buy-in for change with adoption, if someone kind of finds that it's easier for themselves. We're kind of dealing with that right now as we implement a, a CRM solution for our sales team. And we're about four or five weeks into it. And we're just kind of slowly, you know, keeping it simple, keeping it easy, not using all the functionality and just trying to get them one step at a time. Um, so that, so that they don't reject it and, and hopefully we can get adoption. But yeah, you're right. Change is really difficult in this, in, in any industry, but especially this one. You simply, I think you couldn't. I mean, you know, you look at technology type companies uh, like Amazon and other things, and you just can't do those things unless you have, you know, a centralized form of, of technology. It's just impossible. I mean, it, you, people need information today and, and our customers need answers. And without, without things like, you know, the Moraware and everybody being connected wirelessly, um, whether it's in the shop or in the field or in the office, everybody needs information in real time. And, and that's, that's almost impossible to do without, without technology. When we had packets of information, it was, it was really, really hard to do that because then you had to have the paperwork or the folder and, and, you know, as you know, those things get lost. We are doing in this shop about 1,500 square feet a day. 
which equates to uh, about 30 jobs a day. And normally we would be closer to 40 to 50 jobs a day through here. Um, but, you know, it's given us a chance to breathe and to focus on training. Uh, we've been doing a lot of videoing of, of our processes, um, finding new ways to tool things, to do things differently and more efficiently. So when it does come back, we hope to be in better shape. And here we are in our final QC area where we took quality control everything. We load everything up. Um, we ship out um, product to other locations where we have installers. So we'll put it on semi-trucks. But again, having everything with all the information on the parts right there is really helpful. Um, and then our team will load them up either for local install or to be shipped to uh, even another state. We will service Alaska and Montana from here as well. This 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 one's here is going to Washington into Spokane. And you can see the jobs are all bundled up and ready to go. And then we have a facility there with installers that will load out of that. Having this kind of a facility in Alaska is just not, you know, it's not practical. And so um, to do the kind of, this kind of volume, it, it we can centralize the manufacturing and really invest in the tooling and the technology and the people to really do, um, you know, put together a product quickly and get it out and shipped to those places. So this is our uh, this is our final QC area here, and then we go here into our break room. This was a nice little idea that people have visited us that have taken from it. It's a uh, convenience store, a self service convenience store on an honor system that's in here for everybody, and so it's been real nice. It saves the guys time from having to go get lunch or whatever. And um, they just scan their card and and just pay for it as they go. So it's it's been really nice. Obviously, we, we had to modify our break room during the coronavirus to be able to um, maintain, you know, social distancing for lunch and things like that. So in our offices here, you know, most of, most of our team is working from home these days, um, which, you know, we have some people coming in, but for a lot of our team, they've been working from home. Um, you know, we have a voice over IP ring central system. Um, we have some dashboards that monitor the answer rates and, and our customer service scores. Um, we're big on dashboarding and metrics. Um, and so we have customer service surveys and then we, we try to monitor, you know, number of orders and, and we just try to, you know, get the highest customer service we can. Normally this would be full with people working in here, but right now there's just a few of us. I have to feel like virtual meetings, uh, like our in-homes, um, we haven't been doing as many in-homes and more virtual. I feel like that's going to stay. I feel like um, meetings through Zoom are going to stay. Um, I just, I don't know. I just feel like there's some things that are just going to be a little bit different. It's been a tough time that's the last couple of months for everybody in different ways. And I just encourage everyone to hang on. Um, I'm a part of an organization called ISFA. I know more where it supports them too. I think it's a great, great fabricator driven organization. Um, every Monday we're doing shop tours. And I think it's just been nice to have camaraderie um, with all of us, you know, and, and talk about all of the challenges we're facing and, and overcoming. And so I guess the, the one thing I would do is if, if they don't know about ISFA, check it out. Um, and um, it's definitely worth investing in and, and finding, you know, fellow fabricators to, to learn and to teach and just kind of stick together through this whole thing.